the title of, of this speech, or talk, is Be a Jellyfish. And when I was getting mic'd up by the technician, he said, can you ask him, I, I had some questions about, about a jellyfish. I said, okay. Because uh, how many types of jellyfish are there? I said, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> are they all poisonous? I said, not a clue. He said, what happens if, if they're dead on the beach and you step on it? I said, I don't have the faintest idea. He said, good luck with your speech. <laughs> okay. So I think it's more of a general concept uh, than actually discussing uh, actual jellyfish. Uh, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take you through some relatively, this is a jellyfish. And, uh, and, and, um, so I'm going to take you through a little bit of my journey and how I got here, because I think it's, uh, it's, it's a quite interesting story. I, I hope you find it useful. And, and the very first year in my life that was informative was 1985. Right? In 1985, I turned 24 years old, and two things happened in 1985. First was I began my Wall Street career. Right? And I have to remember what 1985 was like. It was also the year that the movie Wall Street came out. Right? And Michael Douglas was my hero. I mean, dreaming, I, I dreamt about being Gordon Gecko every day of my life. Right? Right? It was just such a seminal moment, right? And so I started my, my career in Wall Street, and, and Wall Street was everything. Because remember, there was no social media, there was no dot-com, none of that. It was really Wall Street. That was the place to be, right? And the other thing that happened was I became a parrot head, okay? <laughs> so you all know what a dead head is, right? Someone that follows the dead, but a parrot head is someone that follows Jimmy Buffett. Right, and you all know the name of a children of parrot heads? Parakeets. Parakeets. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? Yeah. So these two grounding principles, the you know, via Wall Street and to become a parrot head for my master plan. Because in my life I always had to have a master plan, right? Because there was one way up the mountain and that was it. Right? So the master plan was twofold. One to make as much money as I could in Wall Street before I turn 40 and retire. And then when I'm 40, I'm going to be following Jimmy Buffett around the rest of my life, <laughs> <laughs> drinking margaritas and never being sober. It was a very easy plan. Okay? So what happened was I, I started a company with a couple other guys who bought a seat on the New York Stock Exchange and were starting to make some very good money. And then we had this thing called Black Friday in 1987. Some of you might not have been born yet, but that was quite an interesting day. It was one day, it was a Monday, and that Monday the stock market fell 22% in a day. Not, not over one month or two months or a year, in a day. It was more than the stock market crashed in 1929. Okay? So we watch CNBC all the time. Market's down 1%, everybody's crying. Okay, imagine if it fell, if the Dow Jones fell 5,000 points in a day. That's what it was. And I can tell you what it was like that day is you didn't know if Tuesday was going to come. <laughs> it was, everyone was just in a state of shock. And if ever you see the uh, scenes from uh, uh, on the New York Stock Exchange when people are buying and selling and screaming, everyone there had their hands like this because nobody knew what was going to happen next. So that was quite a day. Of course, Tuesday came. Right? But it was such a crushing, shocking defeat that the layoffs on Wall Street were unprecedented. Right? So it took a long time to recover. So myself and my partner said, well, you know, we, at least we're young. We're only 27. I still got 13 years to make the master plan. No problem. What did we do wrong is we didn't have enough capital behind us. So at the time in the late 1980s, the strongest banks in the world were Japanese banks. So we went to Japanese banks, and they said, I like the idea. Here's $25 million. See what you can do with it. Right? And then, then, we, then eventually through solid work, we turned that into about $500 million. And then we had this thing, 1998, called the Russian crisis. Okay, and this is when Russia defaulted. The currency was in a free fall. You had hundreds of millions of people unemployed. Yet I took this very personally. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right. Don't these Russians have an idea about my master plan to retire at 40? I'm 37. The stock market fell 20%. Again, I don't understand why the world has this against me. Okay? Right? I mean, I'm running out of time here. I'm getting a little bit nervous, right? And, and at the time, 
my, my wife said to me, you know, this is a great master plan you have, but it's a bit of a roller coaster for me, right? <laughs> so why don't we, you know, think about maybe doing something a little bit calmer? I said, nope, because it's the master plan, <laughs> right? Right. And so what we did do was we took a little bit of money and we bought 12 acres of land in North Carolina. You can see it's uh, not much to look at, right? But it was our sanctuary. So should the roller coaster just go on and on and on, at least we had a place we could knock down the house, put a little double wide, plant some, you know, vegetables, and because I'm Italian, you know, plant some grapes and just kind of live life like that, right? So that was the plan. And I have to tell you, uh, I bought this property in this little town of 360 people, right? Now, it's, they're like one family, right? And so, uh, <laughs> right, right. so the idea of an, an Italian coming down from New York City to buy land here the question I got over and over again was, how long have you been in the witness protection program? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not in the program. So they were pretty skeptical with me, right? right? And so what happened was we kind of dusted ourselves off, and we said, okay, that one really hurt, but third time's a charm. So this time we went to a Swiss bank, and we said, we got it all figured out. We know what the mistakes were. We got it all. Just, just back us. And that Swiss bank agreed to give us... Uh, $100 million as a start. And in seven years, we grew that to be $57 billion, which is the largest in the world, right? And I remember at the end of 2007, early 2008, I said, I have achieved master of the universe status, okay? <laughs> Gordon Gecko's got nothing on me, okay? Right? And I remember I said to my wife, I said, in a couple, in a year or two, we're home free. Right? Then you had this thing called the subprime crisis. <laughs> I'm like, really? Right? Right? And what was unique about this, it wasn't down 20% from top to bottom. It was down 50%. All right? That was quite a punch in the nose. Right? Right? And I don't care that people are losing their houses, but my plan ran out of time. Okay, so now I was 47, right? So I was, my, my expiration had kind of went. Right? But I was still plugging along. Right? And uh, it was one of those moments when you have to realize that maybe master plans aren't meant to be there, right? But I still, I still pushed on, right? And the funny thing that happened on the way to this master plan, and remember that little house that I was mentioning? Well, being Italian, I planted some grapes, right? For really, for, just for friends and family, right? We made a little bit of wine. My friends liked the wine. My family liked the wine. So we made a little bit more, a little bit more. And next thing you know, it became that. Yeah, it absolutely exploded. It wasn't even on my master plan. It wasn't even on anything I had whatsoever, right? It just grew and grew and grew, right? And that little shack you saw turned into that. And that's where you go taste your wine. That's not where I live. I live in that shack, okay? Okay, okay. Because <laughs> I have a mortgage to pay. But that's where you go and that's where you drink your wine, right? So, you know, the funny thing was is moving to North Carolina wasn't even on my agenda, and it was just to make money, then retire and follow Jimmy Buffett around and to do things like that. Uh, it was nothing about this whatsoever, but it just happened so naturally and spontaneously that now it's the center of my life. Right? And so I started to think a little bit, and let me show you about, about, about the scale of how quickly that this grew. We planted 12 acres. We have 112 acres now. Uh, 50 vines and about 50,000 grapevines. All right? Wanted to make 80 bottles, only make 80,000, of which my family drinks most at 80,000. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't pay either, I might add. Right? Right? <laughs> Hence why I'm in the shack, right? Um, and then, of course, my 30, and now 30,000 people visit us every year, of which 1,000 pay, right? right? So I think uh, it, it's really turned out to be something huge, right? And something wonderful. And, uh, one day, I was sitting at the back of the, of the building, the villa, having a bottle of wine, and I started listening to some old Jimmy Buffett songs. Right? And you know how you can listen to a song over and over, you sing the words, but you don't know what the heck you're saying? Right? And then eventually, you kind of figure it out, with the exception of, say, Hotel California, which you'll never figure out your entire life. Right? Even the guys who wrote it can't explain it. Right? Right? And there was this one... Uh, album by Jimmy Buffett. It's about almost 30 years old. I used to listen to it all the time. And the album is called Banana Wind. And in the tropics, a banana wind is a wind that's not quite a hurricane force, but strong enough to knock the bananas off a tree. 
That's a banana wind, right? And the song on this album that really struck me was called Mental Floss. And I'm going to read you the four lines that really was my aha moment. I'd like to be a jellyfish. You see the jellyfish connection here? Okay, okay. <laughs> that's all I know about jellyfish, right? I'd like to be a jellyfish, clear as cellophane. They ride the winds of fortune, life without a brain. Now, my wife has accused me of not having a brain quite often, but that's not really the reason I chose this, because the one that stuck in my, in my, in my thought process was they ride the winds of fortune. Okay? They, don't, they don't have a master plan. They don't know where they're going to be five, ten years. They don't even know where they're going to be tomorrow. Right? They just ride the wind and go with the flow. Right? And they, they can't have a master plan because they don't even have a brain. Right? So, so, so they just follow it. Right? And so as I thought about that, I said, well, maybe this is how I should live my life. Right? And from that one moment in time, and every morning since then, when I wake up, I close my eyes, and I say, be a jellyfish. That's my talk to you. Short, sweet, be a jellyfish, enjoy your harvest, enjoy the ride. It's wonderful. Every day is the gift. Thank you.